Bonjour from the French countryside of southern France. I'm your host, Howard Kravitz of the HHH Racing Podcast. And we are here to talk about the 2024 Pre de Dion this Sunday. It is a group one. It is basically the French Oaks. It's some of the best three-year-old fillies in Europe are competing at Sean T racetrack. And I will be there along with Davy Lane and some other fantastic lads to be punting the fantastic card at Sean T. The Pre de Dion is race five on Sunday from Sean T. It is a 2100 meter race, which is, which is approximately a mile and five sixteenths. It is a million dollars. There are certainly some horses that will be running in that race that are likely to be coming to America at Del Mar Racetrack for the Breeders' Cup in November. Let's take a quick look at some horses uh, that are going to be competing in the pre to Diane, which is. Uh, you're going to be able to bet that if you're uh, a United States citizen, you're watching this on many of your ADWs. It is mid-morning, I think approximately 10, 15 Eastern Standard Time. Again, check your listings or check the Shanti card on Sunday. We're not going to show replays, but I'm going to talk about a few horses that need to be strongly considered in this race, including a horse that is going to take some money that I will be trying to fade uh, in the market. The first source I'd like to talk about is the number 10, Tam Fana. This is a very talented three-year-old filly who is currently nine to four or just above two to one in the anti-post UK market right now. However, on track in France, I don't believe that she is going to be the favorite. She's had two runs this year. She's going to be ridden by Osin Murphy, who's very talented jock in her first race uh, she did not run as well this year but her second race was a spiffing good run at new market in the 1000 guineas she did finish fourth and it was a 1600 meter or one mile race but she was held up in the back she had some trouble uh, and she came absolutely flying down the middle of the track to finish a very close fourth over some excellent rivals uh that was a very high class race and tam fana if she can stretch out effectively and she's bred to do so will be a major factor in the 2024 pre the diane she's the number 10 horse and she's breaking from gate number four the next horse i like to talk about is a lightly raced improving three-year named gala real this is the number 11 Galerie will be breaking from the one hole. Uh, she has to prove her class a bit in this race on Sunday. However, two back in her first race of the year, she won as easily as possible, hands and heels in a class two race, which uh, for you American betters or punters is more like an allowance effort. And she did it as easily as as possible. And then on May 5th in a listed stake, which is just below group three or grade three class, she showed a massive acceleration late when she got to the outside and she ran down and beat a horse called Avin Shur, who I'm going to talk about here in just a minute, who's also in this race coming up on Sunday. So Galerial, who is, um, has French connections and probably will take um, possibly more money than Tam Fana, we'll have to see. Uh, but Galerial, I believe, is somewhere around six to one or eight to one right now in the UK anti post market. She is going to be very live. She has Christophe Soumillon, who's one of the best riders, if not the best rider in France, one of the best riders in the world. So Galerial is going to be a serious threat. She's a progressive, lightly raced three year old filly. A few other horses I do want to mention. Number 13. Aventure. This is the horse that I just mentioned who did lose two back to Galerial. Aventure is the number 13 horse breaking from post 10 in the Prix de Diane on Sunday. Aventure is owned by the same connections as a horse called Goldikova, 
one of my favorite horses of all time, who is unbelievable, three-time Breeders' Cup mile champion. This is the Worthmeyer uh, Connections. First up, again, had a close loss to Gal Real, two back. And then last time going 2,400 meters, uh, which is a mile and a half. So the race on Sunday will be a cutback for Aventure. She won hands and heels as easily as can be, made a little bit of an earlier move and was just coasting uh, to the wire the last 100 meters. Maxime Guillon will be riding Aventure. He's an excellent jockey. Uh, Aventure is going to be a major player in the race on Sunday. Two other horses I do want to talk about quickly. The number one, Kandala, a very talented filly. She is stepping up in distance. That is the major question for me. She's been excellent at 1,400 and 1,600, which is seven furlongs to a mile. The question is, can she stretch out to this mile and five sixteenths? She probably will prefer firmer ground. Right now, the weather forecast is a little bit tricky to predict. They are predicting some rain in the suburbs of Paris. It should be uh, you know, good, possibly soft in some places. We'll have to see, but it's not going to be very soft or at least doesn't look that way. So it'll be pretty fair, somewhere in between good to on the softer side. We'll have to see. But Kandal would probably prefer firm uh, turf. Again, when she, she finished um, in some very good races, she's been a little rank, a little headstrong. But if she can settle early, she has a massive closing kick. Again, the question is, can she handle the 2,100 meters? If she can, she's a serious threat. The horse I'm going to fade that is going to take quite a bit of money you think would be is the number five, Dance Sequence. And some of you might be familiar with this horse. This is a Godolphin horse and will be ridden Sunday by William Buick. So you know worldwide this horse is going to take plenty of action in the market because of uh, the connections. Dance Sequence ran very well um, in her last race. However, she did lose two back and pretty handily to Tempana in the 1,000 guineas. To me, Dan Sequence appears to be a little bit more one pace. I'm not sure she has that quick, rapid acceleration that these French horses will display on Sunday. So Dan Sequence will be in the blue Godolphin silks. Will take money? I'm not so sure. I'm going to be fading her at the top of the placings uh, for two reasons. Her lack of acceleration, she's already been beaten by a few of these, and she's going to take a lot of money in the market. Here in France, there's a bet called the Terce, which is basically the trifecta. My top three uh, in the pre-Diane on Sunday is going to be 13, 10, 11. I'm going to go Aventure off that very impressive win last time two weeks ago over Tom Fana, who is going to take a lot of money and is very talented with a big a jockey upgrade for this race over the number 11 Galerial in third. Let me think here. Uh, Assistion, s'il vous plaît. Garçon. Oui, monsieur. Oui, monsieur. Ah, it's Davy Lane. Le rouge, le rouge, or le, 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 play, le player. Oh, it's Vino. Oui, oui. No, okay. Davy, Davy Lane, of course, is here. Davy's been a great host Assistance for us here. <laughs> we, Davy, tell us, talk to you, uh, your opinions on the 2024 pre dia Diane. I also see you have a nice book in your hand there as well, Davy. Let me plug this while I can. A better go. way of thinking by Matt Miller. There you go. There you go, Davy. It's going to be a very exciting race on Sunday. I'll tilt the camera here yeah. to be a better look. What are your opinions well, at uh, Sean T this <laughs> Sunday for the Group One pre dia Diane? I'd love to throw some bombs everyone's way, but it's not going to happen. Uh, but I will give you a sense of what, what I'm thinking. Uh, and this is how my brain works for this in a simplistic way. I've lined the, 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 the horses up by draw number and I've lined the horses up and I know the form of the horses and I've lined the jockeys up. And something has st stood out in terms of jockey bookings is that an Irish and an English jockey have been drafted in for the race for, for French horses, a uh, Qatari owned horse and an Aga Khan, Aga Khan owned horse. So that's interesting. Uh, but I would be playing here at the track in, on Sunday. I wouldn't be playing a Tessé. I would be playing what the French call a multi. Now, a multi gives you a chance to get four horses in any order 
but you can either spend a three euro bet to pick four horses and then you get the highest dividend but you can also use uh seven horses for the same for the same amount of money and get a less dividend so i would just go with a three euro bet for four horses uh, to get the to get the dividend, and I would expect that to pay someone the order of two hundred to two hundred and fifty euros for three for three euros. So that's that would be my simplistic advice if you were here. And the horses I would like in draw order would be Galarial in drawn one. Christoph Sumion, that's potentially a winning horse I would have liked, but the the, the draw I mean the horses historically ran better on heavy ground. It's going to be drawn inside. There will be a cutaway. Will that cutaway? When that cutaway comes, will there be traffic? I don't know, because the horse has done its best running on the outside, closing fast with a tremendous kick. Next in the list would be Tamfana, drawn four. Fantastic draw. Oshin Murphy will ride it. Rode the horse originally in Deauville early this year, is back on the horse. Uh, that's for a French trainer based in Britain, an unusual reverse commute. A lot of British trainers end up in France where there's more money. That's David Menizier. Uh, so that's the second horse of the group. The Fourth would the third would be uh, Aventure, the Wertheimer Brothers horse with Maxime Guillon, the French champion jockey, and the fourth horse in the boot would be Candela with Chris Hayes, the Irish jockey who rode the uh, Irish uh, um, Arga Khan horse to win the Irish Thousand Guineas. Uh, sorry, the Irish to win the English Oaks, the Epsom Oaks, or the the Oaks as they call it. So those would be four. So I would have lined up seven jockeys that I would have liked, and I would have lined up the draws, and I would have done my calculations that way and come up with that. A couple of horses that you, if you want to use underneath, I would look at the, the horses drawn in number um, in number 13, Rock and Swing, Mikhail Barcelona, number 14, Pariba, Tom Marquand, who's coming over for the ride, if you fancy it. But I wouldn't get too, I wouldn't get too, uh, I wouldn't try to find bombs here. I think it's going to be very formful. Uh, the horses I've said have all shown tremendous kicks down the lane and they're the ones coming fast. So that's what I would be betting. Wonderful. Merci, Davey. Thank you very much. Darien, monsieur. Good luck. Take care. All righty. There you heard it from wonderful, great friend and host, Davey Lane. Hopefully that helps you a little bit for the 2024 pre de Diane. It's the biggest race in the world by far this Sunday, a group one. Good luck at Shanti Sunday. Crush your bets. This has been host Howard Kravitz of the HHH Racing Podcast. Au revoir.